now. Insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. Hardship. My grandmother would go through it every month to pay her insurance bill. First, she would handwrite a paper check, in cursive. Then, using her own tongue, she would wet a stamp for an envelope. Today, however, we need not weary our hands and tongues. Today, we can pay our GEICO bill with the GEICO app. Away with hardship, in with bill pay on the GEICO app. Thank you. Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. It's Jeff Alpin, the Big Game Hunter. It's Monday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and that means it's time for no BS job search advice. The fact of the matter is, more often than not, most of you are doing things that are making it harder for you to find work. And it's not an issue of the job market. It's not an issue of uh, bias or discrimination by employers. More often than not, the issue is you. And I want to start off today's show with uh, a letter that a friend of mine forwarded to me. The letter ostensibly has nothing to do with job hunting. Uh, My friend is an immigration attorney, and he wanted to share with me a story about a a potential new client he had met with uh, who was consulting with him on his immigration prospects. I want to read the letter to you verbatim because I think there's some nice teaching in there uh, that could be helpful for you. Uh, And uh, I'm going to edit tiny little things from it that might involve personal comments he makes to me. Um, And and to to read to you, uh, a new potential client came to me today for a consultation on his immigration prospects, uh, which we analyzed and for which we set up a game plan. I could tell that unlike many clients I meet with, he already knew much of what I was telling him. He was obviously educated, has the the right to work here, but it's not permanent. When I asked him what kind of work he's doing, the look on his face changed, a slight slump uh, in his body and his demeanor. Because like many immigrants, he's extremely underemployed, parking cars, he's just gotten a commercial driver's license, but not doing what he wants to do or believes he can do. And this has affected his outlook and his self-image. I wasn't trying to do any sort of special thing with him, but all I did was ask him some questions in, in the way that I know you and I do. And shortly thereafter, he tells me he is the one stopping himself from getting his education evaluated here. He's, remember, he's born overseas and he has foreign education. Or getting his GED here. And then he asked me if I watch pro basketball, which my friend says he does. And then he goes into the example of Dirk Nowitzki, the German-born center for the Dallas Mavericks, who for many years was an also-ran, until this year, in which he and the rest of his team decided that this was their year, and they were not to be denied. Nowitzki had a serious ankle injury during the, the finals, shook it off, made some amazing plays, essentially carrying the team on his back, and they won the title this year. And then the potential client told him of how Nowitzki said in his interviews, I am resilient. And then this man said to my friend, I am resilient too. And his entire demeanor, his body, face, tone of voice changed, recognizing that even though he doesn't have all he would like here in terms of paperwork, he's got a lot more than others. And he stands up at that point, tells me, the steps he's going to, not to take, creates goals for himself. And my friend wrote about how he noticed what seemed like the burden had come off his shoulders. Basically, this man uh, sorted things out for himself and figured out that he himself had been up until this point the roadblock to achieving what he wanted to to achieve. Now, As I've said earlier, and I've said many times, for many of you, you are the roadblock, and you're not taking the steps that you need to take in order to find the job and do the things necessary to get the kind of job that you want to. Uh, You may be stuck in a role that you're tolerating. Why are you tolerating things? 
if it's a lack of skill, get better skills. Uh, if it's you don't believe anymore that you have the ability that you once believed you had, well, change that. Fix it. Take the steps necessary to do that. You know, I'm reminded because I'm a dad with a, a 10-year-old that kids, when they start off, have incredible belief in what they're able to do. And that as parents, our job is to recognize when they have some fears and help them work their way through their fears. And I'm going to be talking with you about one of the basic fears that people have, and, uh, at least related to job search, and that is networking. Networking is that situation, of course, where you connect with people you may know very well, you may know a little bit, or may not know very much at all, and you're trying to ask them for advice and introduction to get access to more jobs. Why is this important to you? Well, real simple. 30% of jobs are filled by people who are responding to job ads, leaving 70% that are being, hand, uh, being filled by other means. And most of those are being filled through networking. So networking is going to give you access to more jobs. It's going to give you an op opportunity to become involved with more organizations and put you in front of more people where there might be a better opportunity for you than might exist in the ads that you're responding for. Yet for so many people, they're paralyzed and numb to the prospect of taking positive steps to get themselves into a networking situation. Many of you don't go to networking events. Many of you don't go to trade shows. Many of you don't even get involved with LinkedIn other than to try and get as many connections as you possibly can. You're not using it as the networking tool that it's intended as. You're not part of groups online trying to help other people and developing a reputation for yourself as a go-to person in a particular field. You're just going through the motions. And in going through the motions, frankly, you're like this client that my friend wrote about. You're doing your job. You're probably doing it well, but you're settling. And for most people, settling involves an act of accepting defeat. Now, if you want to do that, that's certainly your prerogative. But my objective in giving people no BS job search advice is to tell you flat out that for many of you, for most of you, for almost all of you, you have the same incredible potential as my son had as a young boy. And again, he's 10 now. And, uh, I try very hard not to crush his spirit. Uh, and I know at times it's difficult, but you know, I want him to feel the joy and resilience of life and not feel the crushing defeats that so many others experience. Uh, and, and I want that for you too. So if you're holding yourself back, if you're not putting yourself in networking events, if you're not networking on LinkedIn and other social network sites, you're playing small. And you need to start reconstructing your job search to get yourself access to the 70% of the jobs that you're not exposing yourself to because you're not out there trying to connect with other people. So, again, I want to encourage you, step up. Do the things that make you uncomfortable. And with that, I want to close this segment of the show with, with an, uh, a story I heard many years ago about how lions hunt gazelle. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry if it, uh, the hunting story offends some of you, but uh, it's, it's, it's a story about uh, how animals hunt in, in the wild. And, you know, gazelle are faster than lions. And they're certainly faster than old lions. But the lions set up a system where they were able to catch the gazelle pretty you know, effectively. And what they do is old gazelle, who clearly cannot catch the, uh, I'm sorry, old lions, who clearly cannot catch 
the gazelle, lie hiding in a place. And then the young lions start chasing the gazelle, who are able to outrun them. And the young lions are basically driving the herd of gazelle in the direction of the old lions. Now, as the gazelle come up on the old lions, the old lions stand up and roar, which frighten the young gazelle. And they turn around and run back into the teeth of the young lions, who are able to catch them and, and kill them for food. Had the, the gazelle run in the direction of what frightened them, if they had run toward the thing that they were most afraid of, they would have been able to defeat it because they're just faster than the old lion. But their fear got the best of them. And so it is in much of life and in job hunting. The very things that you don't do because you're afraid of embarrassing yourself or just outright afraid because you don't think you do it well are the very things you need to get better at. Those are the skills you need to develop in order to become exceptional and to get access to the opportunities that you want. So my encouragement for you is to get out there and practice and get better at these things. Go toward the roar just like those young gazelle need to do, okay? Now, I want to start talking with you about some of the jobs I'm recruiting for. And I'll start by saying there are a lot more on my website. So if you go to jeffaltman.com, you can search for uh, many jobs I'm recruiting for beyond simply the ones I'm going to mention today. And in addition, you can look at previous issues of No BS Job Search Advice, uh, listen to previous episodes uh, of this show, and overall, uh, you know, get a better feel for my experience and uh, you know, take some more steps toward getting some of the opportunities that you want. Uh, you know, there are links where you can post your resume on the site. Uh, and, and a whole host more, more things. So go exploring on the website, uh, and let me start talking with you about some of the jobs I'm recruiting for. So for one of the global consulting firms, I have a host of positions ranging from um, associate to manager to senior manager roles at salaries that are under 100000 to in excess of 200000 they're based in Charlotte, North Carolina, for insurance data management professionals uh, who have experience uh, in uh, one or more insurance operations areas, like in underwriting, reinsurance, claims, investments, or financial reporting, who have a technology background. And the more senior you are, the more they have an expectation that you might have consulting experience. They would love to have people with a background in policy or claims administration software solutions uh, who might have knowledge uh, with leading economic capital management and modeling tools. Uh, as I said, a host of positions here at a broad range of salaries. Then, based out of New York with the same firm, I have roles in credit risk technology. Like the previous jobs I mentioned, these also involve travel. 75, maybe maybe 80 percent. Uh, degreed individual, preferably an MBA. Six or more years of experience working at financial services companies or comparable experience working at services firms. Um, you know, banking and capital markets, credit product background, absolute requirement. Um, credit and, and capital management business processes. Uh, data mapping. There's a lot more on my website for this job, but um, I'm starting to come up on time for the end of my show. So I just want to say come over to my website and look at some of the jobs that are listed there. And if you're qualified, interested, available in any of them, please email your resume to me at thebiggamehunter at cisny.com. If you know someone who might fit one of these jobs better than you, invite them to forward a resume to me and mention your name. Uh, you know, if, if I fill the job with, with them, you'll receive a finder's fee from me. If you want me to have a copy of your resume, by all means send it, but in the subject line, uh, use the phrase on spec. 
Now, I won't be broadcasting next week because it's going to be Labor Day in the United States, but I'll be back the following Monday with more No BS Job Search advice for you. Again, come to my website, jeffaltman.com, and go exploring. Um, you might even consider picking up one of my books about job search. I think a lot of you need help with your search process. This is Jeff Altman, The Big Game Hunter. I hope you have a successful week and enjoy the holiday weekend. Take care. Say hi to spring's most amazing style steal at Old Navy. One day only, tomorrow, women's tanks are just $2. And don't forget to come in now to redeem your super cash. Hurry in. High fashion, Old Navy. Valid 429, limit 5 per customer. Select styles in stores only.